Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And what I'm doing today is my initial trapping scout. I've still got a couple of weeks before season starts. Coyote, of course, is in season all year long, but you want to wait until that fur is prime. So you want to wait till colder weather to trap those coyotes if you're trapping for fur. Now, I'm in an area right here where I've got two trails and an intersection that comes into those two trails. Basically, I have one linear trail with an intersection coming away from that. This area is a prime location for trapping because animals always take the path of least resistance. So the coyotes and things like that are going to travel down these open trails. And any place I have a turn in that trail is where I'm going to put my traps. And if the trap location is good enough for one trap, it's generally good enough for two. So I'm going to pick two locations in this area to put my traps. But trail confluences like this, or intersections in trails, are always prime targets for trapping. Now this is one of my primary set locations. I told you yesterday in the video that I have probably 50 trap locations that I pick and choose from to set my 20 to 25 traps. And then I move them around from there. But I generally don't have more than 25 traps out at any given time during the trapping season. This area right here, there is an open pipeline that runs right here both directions and this wood this trail goes off into the woods right here linear along the center of my property so an area like this is prime this this area on the on the pipeline itself is one of the prime target areas for me for canines and as well as cats because they travel up and down the path of least resistance they can get high ground because it rolls a lot so they can see a long ways and they can travel fast they can duck into the woods for cover very, very quickly or move into the woods to try to ambush prey along this open pipeline. This is a great location for trapping canines as well as cats. Now, let's talk about this corner because we're going to trap this corner for sure. Now, if I'm going to trap this corner, I need to find a place where the animals aren't going to cut the corner like a deer and trip into my trap. So I'm going to back up into this corner around these high weeds and these trees and get my trap back in here. Then I can use this tree as some kind of a scent post marker to bring that coyote, to bring that cat right to my location of my trap without worrying about some deer walking through it when he's cutting this corner. This is a great trap location. Okay, what we have right here is a little overflow, what I call a miniature pond. And it's definitely holding fish. You can see the water moving in there. But it dumps off from here in a drainage ditch and then it flows off into this area back here which is right now higher ground so you've got a trapped pool right here of fish that's going to be prime hunting territory especially for things like mink possibly raccoon but remember the deeper the water is the less chance you're going to have of coon being in that water they don't want to be cold either they're not going to go swimming for the fish they want those good rock outcropping areas up there in the shallows or a nice bank area where they can get down and hunt from like this right here. So those are going to be your your prime location for setting traps. But the point is, we'll talk about the sets themselves more when we get into the season this year. But what I want to show you now is what I'm looking at for trap locations. And if you look right back in here under that branch, there's a nice undercut in the bank right there. That is a prime location for a mink trap. Mink will definitely come through here. They're definitely going to investigate this whole area right here. And mink, again, they're going to travel on dry ground when they can, but they have no problem getting in the water and swimming, as well as muskrat. And an undercut bank like that where there's a little pocket that's already naturally created is a perfect place for a blind set on like a 110 or a 155. Okay, here's another area where you've got water gently flowing into a deeper area and it's coming from back here flowing into here and you've got a deep pocket right here and you've got an undercut of brush or a covering of brush right there if a mink or a muskrat's coming through here well mink especially he's going to hug that bank and he's going to grab that undercut right there and go through there to get to the deeper water beyond that's a perfect spot for a 110 and a blind set right there. He's not going to get in this deep water pool and swim through there. He's going to get up in the shallows, and that's where you're going to catch him at. So that's another prime trap location in this area. Okay, here's another prime 
set location. You've got shallow water here in the form of a tributary type stream or runoff going into deeper water. So that pocket right back here where it kind of constricts itself down and block that off just a little bit and throw a blind set in there, muskrat, mink, no problem. Okay, so let's talk about trapping sign for a minute because we always talk about trapping and looking for sign. You see all these chewed sticks that are fresh, got the bark ripped off of them, they're nice clean cuts at the bottom at an angle. That's generally beaver or muskrat, for sure. If you look across here, there is a nice big fat slide coming into this waterway. And a big old pile of sticks right there. Probably a bank beaver living in there, if I had to guess. This is prime trapping location for beaver. Now again, in Ohio, beaver season comes in really, really late. This is basically right on the corner of my property line. So I could trap this, theoretically, but I couldn't trap it till the end of December. But as far as muskrat go, where there's beaver, there's generally some muskrat too. And I know there's muskrat in here because I've trapped them out of this tributary before. So I would definitely not hesitate to throw some traps in here for mink and muskrat as well. But I'm about willing to bet that's probably beaver right there. So we've got a water crossing right here that comes down this pipeline, pretty much submerged now, but the animals are crossing that same crossing. And you can see, we talked about setting on sign. There's some deer sign right there, but there's also quite a bit of coyote tracks in this mud. This natural track trap can give us clues on where to set. If they're coming across here, they're coming onto this mud and they're trying to get out of this water. Something right on the other side over there where that Rocon's parked just off to the side of the trail with maybe a scent post marker of some kind or a piece of white bone as a visual attractant. Be a great place for a coyote set in this area. Again, set sign. You know the coyotes are here. There's tracks. Set sign. Okay, so again, thinking like a meat trapper here now. Not necessarily a fur trapper, but... I would probably do both even if I was trapping fur. You've got a pipeline here, and you've got a wet marshy area right here with a culvert pipe that goes over the top. The culvert pipe is a no-brainer. We're gonna set that culvert pipe in that area where it looks like there's something coming down to it right there on a the trail, and probably on this side as well. Coon, possum, that's a no-brainer. But the canine set is up here. Canine set's gonna be just on one side or the other of this crossing because those canines that are coming down this pipeline are not going to walk through that and get their feet wet if they don't have to. The mice aren't going to be down there in that water. They're going to take this high ground right here, come across this culvert, and the trap location is going to be right here somewhere. We'll decide that later down the line, but this is definitely a place we're going to put a trap. All right, this is always, always a good set location. You got a log right here coming all the way across this creek. Nice wide log. Plenty of places to set traps on it. Doesn't matter whether you're setting a conibear on that thing or whether you're setting a foothold on there. You got plenty of places to put traps and bait. You could even put a coon cuff on that log. But what I generally do is right here on the other side, again, this is one of my favorite set locations. There is a tree pretty much as soon as you step off that log. And I generally anchor to that or an anchor to this tree right here with a coon cuff and it's almost a guaranteed hit at least once a week for a while anyway you're going to catch something right there log crossings are always key target areas and if you can find coon scat on the log that's even better but i know that this log's heavily traveled because i've caught coon here every year okay so we're in an area where we've got lots of swampy wetland here and this is a log crossing. It just goes across a little swampy area. You might not think too much about that, but again, looking for sign. And what's right there? A crayfish that something has eaten. Guaranteed, a trap on this log, sooner or later, is gonna catch an animal. Or on one side or the other of it. 
But if an animal's sitting up here to eat crayfish, it's not the first time he's ever done it. They go to the same restaurants all the time, just like we do. All right, so we've got a really long, slender stream right here. And so you're thinking to yourself, how would I know where to put a trap? Well, part of that just comes from experience. But most of it comes from setting sign. And as I'm walking down through this creek, I found an area right here. That's a sandy bank that just drops right down to it. Where an animal could not get real wet if they didn't want to, but they could feed. And there are several crayfish holes in the side of the bank. So that tells me that their food is definitely here. There's almost like a little natural pocket set inside of the bank right there. But I'm looking at the ground and I'm looking for footprints. And I see lots and lots of partial tracks down here. There's a really good track right there, I hope you can see. Looks like it might even be a mink. So this area is going to be an area where I'm going to want to put at least a trap. That's how I find areas to trap when it's an area that's really, really large. And you're like, well, I'm only going to set a couple traps on this creek. Where do I want to put them? Well, I'm going to put them where they're signed. And if I see tracks and I see food sources and I see an easy way to get down to that waterway where the animal doesn't have to climb down anything steep to get to it, that's where he's going. All right, guys. Well, this has just been a quick walk around video, a little bit of walk and talk about trap set locations and looking for sign. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just getting started in this trapping series, so I wanted to kind of start with some of the basics before we start laying traps in. I've got to travel to Utah to train uh, the sales staff for the Muck Boot Company in some breakout type training next week on emergency survival. So I'll be in Utah next week for four days, and then I'll be back and I'll be getting ready to set my line for the upcoming 2016 Modern Trapping class, November the 9th, I think it is, through the 14th. So we do have a couple slots left in that class. If you'd like to join us, you can find the information for that on our website. But I'm sure we're going to take plenty of photos to put on Facebook and also post plenty of video from that class as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.